So PFF is back at it again, but this time with their quarterback ranking. So let's see what Lamar Jackson and everybody else in the NFL ranks for this upcoming season. And you know just what I mean. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and yes another list now again this is not my own list because y'all know I hate making lists I don't like making lists at all not one bit but I do love going over other people's lists now we went over the running backs list already where they had JK Dobbins at 26 <laughs> so let's go over the quarterbacks but before we go over this list I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, I know the uh, the interview with uh, Sean Wade's father, Randy, I know that was something that was very, very different, but I appreciate y'all checking it out. Uh, I appreciate all the positivity, all the positive comments that y'all left on the video, and I appreciate y'all just really rocking with the interview, man. I had a lot of fun doing it, and like I said, it was a privilege. So shout out to him for even being willing to come on. Um, shout out to y'all team. Keep it clean. I hope your day, your week, your month, your year is going really good, and if it's not, you got plenty of time to turn it around. Plenty of time. So don't think that, oh, just because these first five months haven't been the best five months in the world, you're still here. So you got plenty of time to turn it around. So don't give up. Don't quit. Whatever it is that you're doing, please keep going. Please keep going. Don't quit. Uh, shout out to all of y'all, man. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Real quick, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all for showing extra support because uh, it helps a lot. Trust me, it helps a whole lot. Uh, so I love all of y'all, man. Without further ado, we need to get into this list. Now, what is this list based off of? Well, let's read. And it came from Bruce Grakowski, who is a former NFL quarterback. I think he played for the Bucks. I know he played for the Steelers. Did he play for the Browns? It don't even matter. Anyway, this is what the list is about. PFF's quarterback rankings are based on grading every player on every play and tapping into multiple years of data to project future performance. We go beyond just last season's performances, and the grading works to isolate each quarterback's performance from that of his supporting cast, making for more effective projections. All right, so there we go. Uh, so this is based off of future project projections, how they feel uh, about these quarterbacks' future based off of their past and based off of their personnel as well. So, so now we have a clear understanding of what this list is. So let's take a look at it first. Of course, uh, Lamar Jackson, he is ranked at number eight. So number eight out of 32. And let's see why. It says regression is likely when coming off of an, of an MVP campaign. And we saw that from Lamar Jackson. Okay, that's true. Because how do you follow up an MVP campaign? How? Like, anyway. Uh, the Ravens offense was less effective in the run game and the offensive line struggled at times this past season. At times... <laughs> I think you want to say it struggled for the entirety of the season. And it was Ravens Achilles heel literally all year. And that's the exact reason why they faced the exit out of the playoffs a lot sooner uh, rather than later. Anyway, it says still Lamar Jackson continued to prove he is one of the most dynamic playmakers in the NFL. If not the most, if the Ravens can help him out with a more efficient and effective pass game, sound like they've been listening to the videos, uh, tied into their run concepts, then I would expect Jackson to get back to an MVP form. Baltimore has a tough schedule ahead compared to last year, so Jackson will have to shoulder the load to prove he can take the Ravens back to the promised land. Has he not been doing that already? Has he not? See, what the Ravens need to do in order to get to the promised land is the exact opposite of the end of this. It said, again, let me reread it again. So Jackson will have to shoulder the load to prove he can take the Ravens back to the promised land. Well, shouldering the load is what he's been doing for the past couple of years. What we need, what the Ravens need is for Lamar Jackson. It can't just be the Lamar Jackson show. He's, of course, going to do his thing. We know he's going to make his plays. We, gonna, we know he's going to make all them highlights and whatnot. But it can't just be him. It can't. And not even that it's just him right now, but we just need more input from other people too. So that's on Lamar. That's on the receivers. That's on the running backs. That's on Greg Roman. That's on the coaching staff. That's on everybody to make sure these other guys get involved too. Because when these other guys get involved, it takes so much pressure off of Lamar Jackson and it takes so much attention off of Lamar Jackson. And that, so when he does make a play, it'll come out of nowhere. 
It ain't got to be anything that we expect. It'll just be, oh, Lamar, where that come from? Something like that. Anyway, let's get into this list. At number one is Patrick Mahomes. And you can understand why they would have Patrick Mahomes at number one. And again, we got to remember, this is not just based off of last year. This is based off of these quarterbacks and the entirety of their careers. And it's based off of future projections, based off of what these guys have done in their past. So Patrick Mahomes being number one, cool, no problem. Number two, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Uh, Tom Brady, they, they got all the boys back together. And they had a lot of success last year. Obviously, they are Super Bowl champions, so they had a pretty good amount of success. Uh, but they literally brought everybody back. Now, Antonio Brown, his comeback is not official yet because he got to pass the physical first. Uh, and I believe what they said, he had like a, some surgery or something that he had to take care of. But anyway, they got all the boys back together. So they are expecting Tom Brady to have another good season. And A, I, I know it did say, I think it said 2023. Uh, but hopefully that can be sped up to this year because if y'all saw the BR, uh, the Bleacher Report Gridiron where they had they make the little videos and stuff and they made the video of Tom Brady how um I think Bruce Arian said that he expects Tom Brady to play till he's like 50 or something like that and they had a video of the Super Bowl in 2023 and it was like oh the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2023 uh, versus the Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl. And I was like, hold up, because you know some of them videos they be, they be putting us on or some stuff so maybe they can accelerate that and that can be it this year. Anyway, number three. Aaron Rodgers from the Packers. You got to put a little asterisk here because it's Aaron Rodgers and it's the Packers. It's looking like, I mean, it's looking like this thing is going to get sm smoothed out and it's looking like it's going to be okay. Uh, we don't know that for sure, but we haven't heard anything. Like, this has been the quietest week with this whole Aaron Rodgers thing. So maybe the two sides, they end up being friends again and they could put the whole situation in the past. Uh, number four, Russell Wilson. Mm. Russell Wilson. He continues to do his thing. Let Russ cook, um, but you know uh, Seahawks. They the most. Uh, they the most effective when the running backs are cooking. When the running game is cooking, so we'll see how that offensive line is moving forward. But at, for for what from what Russell Wilson has done and accomplished in the entirety of his career, I, I can understand this one. And of course, with future projections as well. I mean, he got one of the best receivers in the league with DK Metcalf. Still got Tyler Lockett. Um, so yeah, they 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 gonna do their thing. We know Seahawks. They gonna do their thing, but they got a tough division. You know, Kyler Murray and them boys, they, they coming for him. Of course, the Rams, Rams just, Rams won't go away. They won't go away. They always going to be right there. Uh, so they letting it be known like, hey, but we ain't going nowhere. Uh, and then, of course, you got the 49ers too. 49ers, we'll see what happens with them and Jimmy G. But, hey, and then this whole thing with Julio Jones, they've been one of the teams that have been listed as expecting to be interested in Julio Jones. So you never know. Anyway, uh, Deshaun Watson. Ooh, okay. Deshaun Watson is a, um, this is an interesting one uh, because of, they lost a lot. They got like eight quarterbacks on that roster right now. So the Texans are definitely preparing for life uh, after Deshaun Watson, it seems. Um, but him being here, uh, mm, this and this is based off of, what he's done in the past, okay, but off his future projections and his supporting cast, uh, this one, ah, uh, uh, man, yeah, um, ah, I, I just leave that there. I, that that one's I'm a little, that one got me kind of scratching my head a bit right there. Um, yeah, it got me scratching my head a bit because I know that with the list, this list is not based off of team success. But it did say it's based off of the best quarterbacks in the league and, and, and about their support and cast and, again, what they've done before. So, uh, okay, whatever. This one's cool. Uh, Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Boy, he's at number six. Josh Allen last year, boy, he, he lit the world on fire. Lit the world on fire. Look at the difference that having that guy at the receiver position makes and it helps everybody around him too everybody it helps the quarterback it helps the other receivers it helps the defense because y'all are scoring more points so it makes the defense's job easy it helps everybody when you get that <laughs> y'all already know man so josh allen cool now right here um dak prescott is at number seven and lamar is at number eight now again um this see this list, this is where it's a bit confusing because 
it does seem like it may be based a lot more on stats than actual impact to the team. Now, we know the Cowboys need Dak Prescott, and Dak Prescott needs the Cowboys. We know that for sure. Um, but it's like, and we talk about this all the time with Dak Prescott, with Deshaun Watson, with, with a lot of other quarterbacks too, where how they'll have these pretty numbers in the passing game, these beautiful numbers. Oh, man, these numbers are so gorgeous. Well, they look so great. But then you look at their record, and it's like, oh, did those numbers, do they really mean that much? Uh, so, I mean, it, it is what it is. And again, that serves as another indication that this list is not based off of team success. It seems like it's based more off of just individual quarterback success. So, that's cool. All right, so Dak Prescott was at seven. Lamar Jackson followed him up at eight. Number nine, ooh, Matt Ryan with the Falcons. Okay, now this is a very interesting one. Now, Matt Ryan, of course, um, ever since the whole Super Bowl debacle, um, he has just, I feel like he's found himself lost. And, and people haven't really appreciated Matt Ryan as much as they did before. Um, so it's almost like he just finds himself just sort of floating around the league, um, not really getting mentioned much, uh, not, really getting, uh, not really getting respected much either. Um, when you hear about Matt, well, you don't really hear about Matt Ryan like that. I mean, recently you heard the whole rumor about that they said Julio said he lost some zip on his arm, lost some zip on a deep ball, and all the, who knows though? Because it was a it was a Patriots guy, and I, they probably just trying to stir up some drama, trying to create a rift so Julio could get moved. But because because you know how media works. Um, but Matt Ryan and Falcons. Now he um he got he has Hayden Hurst, got Kyle Pitts now too. Of course, Calvin Ridley, um, and that fullback with them thighs. Like it, this is like a fullback version of Saquon Barkley, like times two with the thighs. Like it, it's real deal, man. That dude, I forgot his name. My apologies, but that dude's legs, like, it's for real, man. Um, but Julio Jones is apparently on the move. So this offense that could be, it may not be as much. Um, once Julio, well, obviously it won't be as much when Julio, because Julio is Julio. As many games as he's missed. Julio still Julio. Julio is a sort of bailout type of wide receiver. You could just throw it up, and, and Julio, he'll save you. He will save you. And it's always nice when quarterbacks have those type of wide receivers because it just it makes a quarterback look that much better. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, but Matt Ryan, like I said, he's been sort of lost in the shuffle. Number 10, Baker Mayfield. Now, he has been on the come up. Uh, Baker Mayfield, uh, he, he's, he's pretty good, man. And he has a very, very good supporting cast. So I could see why they would have him this high uh, based off of future projections, especially with the Browns in this new system. It seems like they, they, they figured it out. They really started to figure it out a lot more on offense because they have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. The running game obviously goes through both of those guys. Um, and, and then they re redid their entire offensive line. Uh, and then, of course, their, their receivers. They have some very high-quality wide receivers, and they use a lot of play action because the running game is so effective. That makes the play action effective. That makes Baker Mayfield effective. Um, so I, I can understand why he's here. Uh, next up is Matthew Stafford. Oh, and again, <laughs> this is another reminder. It's not based off of team success, this list. But it's based off of future projections per, per, pertaining to the quarterback as an individual. And now his supporting cast, it is better, especially when it comes to defense. So we're we, we going to see how Matt Stafford does, man. Um, I'm excited to see him with the Rams, especially being a Ravens fan. I mean, we're going to see them in week, what is it, week 16, 17, or 17 or 18? I forgot which week it is, but... Ravens will be seeing Matt Stafford and them up close and personal. Uh, so we'll see how he does in his new, uh, with his new uniform. It seems like, man, it seems like he got the much better end of the deal with him and Jared Goff. Like, Jared Goff go, oh, yeah, we about to be the L or we already are the L.A. Rams. We got this new stadium. We about to get fans back. And then all of a sudden, boom, oh, nope, you're going to the Lions. Yikes. That, that, that'll hurt your soul. Next up, number 12, Ryan Tannehill. We were just talking about that, how effective that play action is so much over there with the Cleveland Browns. It is no different here. 
It is no different here because Derrick Henry has been that guy for the Tennessee Titans. Everything runs through Derrick Henry on that team. Everything. Um, so that makes Ryan Hill, Ryan Tannehill's, I just call him Ryan Hill, Ryan Tannehill's job that much easier because all he got to do, he could just fake it to Derrick Henry. He could even call it out like, hey, I'm about to fake to Derrick Henry, but I'm really about to throw it. And the defenses, they'll be so keen on Derrick Henry that he, he could say that out loud. And he could fake it to him. Still, defense will be that be all over Derrick Henry because he just poses that much of a threat. But when you stop Derrick Henry, that's when you stop that Titans offense. But, again, nobody really stops Derrick Henry that much unless it's the Ravens in the playoffs last year. But nobody really stops Derrick Henry that much. So that allows Ryan Tannehill to be that much more effective. And then when you got somebody like an A.J. Brown. And you got somebody like an A.J. Brown as you're not. A.J. Brown is nice. He is, like, really, really good. I, I love how he plays, man. Physical, fast, not afraid. He'll fight for the ball. That's a lot of F slash PHs. So, he'll get physical, fast, he'll fight. He ain't afraid. I love it, man. Um, So, that makes Tannehill's job, like I said, that much easier. Uh, Next up, number 13, Derek Carr. I was just talking to somebody uh, about Derek Carr a couple days ago and how with Derek Carr it just seems like it's it's just a roller coaster this guy got all the potential in the world but it just seems like it's just sometimes Derek Carr will be hot man he'll be hot it's like oh Derek Carr okay we see you and other times it'll be like oh Derek Carr what is going on hello so I, I think with Derek Carr to me it seems like um the game not that the game even has to slow down for him but just mentally he has to take another step forward mentally um because he, he he got all the tools in the world he got some not that he got some speed but he can move a little bit he got the arm and he got some talent around him too um so we'll just see how this all <laughs> plays itself out this year with the raiders just not week one don't don't do good week one after that i don't care uh next up for, oh number 14 kirk cousins kirk cousins is another guy uh very underrated as a quarterback very underrated. Um, Kirk Cousins, <sighs> he is somebody that a lot of people, when they hear that name, they don't really give him that respect like that. They don't. And Kirk Cousins is not a bad quarterback at all. Um, and, of course, again, Dalvin Cook, uh, when you have one of the better running backs in the league, especially as a quarterback, that makes your job that much easier. That much easier. So, shout out to him. 15. Oh, Herbert. I, I I like Justin Herbert a lot, man. Um, like I always say, Justin Herbert is cold, man. He he's gonna be really really good, really really good. Uh, because I feel like he can do everything. Like he he can move like a little bit. I ain't worried about that too much. But that arm, he got the big arm, but he can throw accurately even on the move. Um, and he got some nice targets to throw to, some big targets to throw to, some targets that can move. Keenan Allen with the route running, Mike Williams with the jumping. Yeah, Her- Herbert going to be A-OK. Uh, then number 16 is Ben Roethlisberger, Big Ben. Um, wow. So that's base, that's that's how they feel? I, I, I feel like Ben Roethlisberger actually, I feel like he's a little bit low. Cause you get, you still got Chase Claypool, you still got uh, um, you got Juju Smith Schuster again, uh, you got Deontay Johnson, you just got Najee Harris, so he'll help uh with the running game. I'm not sure how that offensive line is gonna be, um, because that was a big problem with them last year. But uh, yeah, I actually feel like Ben Roethlisberger is a little bit low. I feel like a lot of people are really sleeping on Ben Roethlisberger going into this season. A lot of people have written Steelers off, but me, oh, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Especially being a Ravens fan, like, we know firsthand who these Steelers are, what these Steelers have done, what these Steelers can do, and we, we, we know firsthand. And even being a Ravens fan, even, even when the Steelers are down, they could be losing this guy, they could have lost that guy, that guy, that guy. When they play Ravens, it, it don't be seeming like it half the time. It seems like everybody's there. Uh, so with Ben Roethlisberger, I actually feel like he's pretty low. Um, now, I know la- last year he started off hot. Started off hot, then toward the end of the season, uh, got a little bit shakier. Uh, and then the playoff game was just ugly. Yeah, that, that was disgusting, especially the, the, the very beginning of it. Um, but 
I, I, I think that this is a little bit too low for him. Anyway, number 17, Kyler Murray. Ooh, Kyler Murray. Boy, you talk about a team providing weapons. <sighs> Kyler Murray, um, he is in such a good situation. And, I mean, it, it's, it's not going to happen. The car, I, like, ooh. I would be I'll be so upset if the Cardinals got Julio Jones because we've all seen the whole tweet with DeAndre Hopkins with how he was talking about oh I I'll I'll re uh what do you say I'll reconstruct what do you, what's the word I, I I can't think of the word right now but I'll redo my contract um for Julio Jones he let it be known on social media that he'll be willing to do that and it's like man if just imagine that. Two of the best receivers in the league. And at one point, you'll have another guy who used to be one of the best receivers in the league when he was healthy. But he ain't been healthy in a long time. That being A.J. Green. So DeAndre, if they had DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, A.J. Green, um, Isabella, they drafted uh, the fast guy, the, the short, I think Rondell Moore. They drafted him. Um, Kyler Murray, I mean, even without Julio Jones, because he obviously is not there, but they gave this guy some weapons. So future projections, uh, I, I could definitely see it. Even like even last year, there was a point last year where uh, Kyler Murray he was just like on a hot streak. He was on a hot streak. It cooled down a little bit, but Kyler Murray he's pretty good, man. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in the future. Number eighteen. Oh wow, Joe Burrow. Wow, I did not anticipate him being that high. Uh, now I know last year he um, he did look uh, good. Um, but he did have some stuff he needed to work on, but he was also a rookie. So you can't overanalyze a rookie. Uh, that's his first year. You got to see consistency game to game, month to month, year to year. Um, but I, I feel like 18 is kind of high. But that's that's their future based off of what he did last year and based off of his future projections. Maybe because Cincinnati got like 50 receivers and 50 good receivers. Maybe that's why. Because Cincinnati, they, boy, they don't play. They, oh, you want a receiver? Okay, we're going to make sure we provide receivers for you. Now, the receivers, they're going to be on the offensive line blocking too, but we're going to make sure you got receivers. Um, so maybe, maybe that's what it's based off of. Next up, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Washington football team. I forget a lot of times that he went there. I forget a lot that he went there. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, obviously, he's done enough to keep a job. Um, cause he... He always got a job. He played for the Rams. He played for the Texans. He played for the Dolphins. Now he's on the Washington football team. I, I know I'm missing somebody too. But um, oh, the Bills, the Jets. Uh, he done been around. He done been around. But he still keeps on going. Um, but with the Washington football team, I think they got Curtis Samuel. They obviously got Scary Terry. Uh, but I feel like with Ryan Tannehill, I feel like the expectations are. I feel like these teams just never, the expectations are low. With, not Tannehill, Ryan Fitzpatrick. I feel like the expectations are low because you don't, there's, there's nothing to really expect out of him. You just expect, okay, we know Fitzpatrick. He's going to uh, possibly do enough for us to win but uh, or do enough to not lose or maybe not do enough for us to win. He's a streaky quarterback. He, when he's hot, he's hot. When he's not, he's not. But he doesn't really get too hot like that. Um, I just feel like like his at this point in his career, even last year at this point in his career, it's just like th there's not much that's expected of him. It's not like you're expecting this guy to come in and, and be the savior for the team, anything like that. No, you expect him to just be a placeholder until you really figure out your quarterback situation. So I think that's exactly what it is with the Washington football team. And it's tough, too, because um, you just you, you, you feel sometimes for other teams and stuff where it just seems like they're sort of complacent. Like, they're just complacent, like, oh, okay, well, it's whatever. Next season, oh, it is what it is. It's not a big deal. You don't want that. So, anyway, next up, uh, Daniel Jones from the Giants. He's at number 20. And the Giants, they really gave Daniel Jones a lot. They said, oh, Kenny Galladay, what, he played like four or five games last year? But, no, we'll take him. We'll take him. We're going to pay him some 18 mil a year. Kyle Rudolph, oh, we'll take him. We'll take him. He's going to be our tight end one. Evan Ingram, take a back seat, buddy. Getting Saquon Barkley back. Um, they drafted, I want to say, who they drafted? Kadarius Tony, right? But so so with Daniel Jones, they're giving him weapons. They're giving him weapons. They're they giving him 
they put him in a position to succeed. Um, so they saying, hey, Daniel, DJ, the ball's in your court. So go do your thing. Uh, number 21, Trevor Lawrence. Whoa, okay. Well, got the rookie at 21. Okay. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see who follows Trevor Lawrence on this list, especially given that, given that he's a rookie. Now, they obviously got some decent expectations for him, but you can't really base it well, unless they're basing it off of uh, – last year in college and whatnot what he did in college if they bring in the his college pff rankings to the nfl which i could see them doing but um this is a we'll see we'll see how it goes under trevor lawrence jimmy garoppolo wow mm. and they start they start us off by saying uh for jimmy garoppolo injuries have become the story for garoppolo as he started as he has started less than 50 percent of the 49ers game since the beginning of the 2018 season Wow. Mm, mm, mm. But they did draft Trey Lance. So Jimmy Garoppolo is on a short leash. We, we heard so many rumors about him possibly being cut or traded. Uh, nothing yet, but it could literally happen at any second. But he's definitely on a short leash. So I can understand why he's low because, you know, the 49ers, you know, 49ers fans, they're going to be looking. They're gonna, when you draft a quarterback in the first round, when your team drafts a quarterback in the first round and you have somebody in place already who hasn't been doing their thing, whether it be because of injury or because of bad play or shaky play, when you draft a quarterback in the first round, the current quarterback you have is, is, is going to be overly scrutinized. They, they're going to be watched extra close. And they can't make no mistakes because e even if they play perfectly, it's still going to be some people calling for their head. But if they start to make mistakes and they still show you stuff, why that gives you a reminder of the reason why your team drafted another quarterback, you're going to be ready for them to be on out. You're going to be ready for it. So that's what it's looking like with Jimmy G. 23, Carson Wentz. Oh, they, they got Carson Wentz at low? Really? Well, okay. So Wentz led the NFL last season in turnover-worthy plays. And didn't even play after week 14. Oh, yikes. That's why I said that. So, he didn't play after week 14. But even, even with missing those games, he still led the league in turnover-worthy plays. That's a lot. <laughs> um, but Carson Wentz, I, I, I think that that would, that would be a really good team for Julio to go to. That I, I would not like it, uh, especially because my Ravens played him. But with Carson Wentz, um, again, potential's there. Potential's there. Got to stay healthy. Uh, and just the decision-making. He, he got to make, well, the thing with him, I think he got to make better decisions early on in the game. Because with Carson Wentz, um, a lot of the games that I watch from him, he, I feel like he's like, a, he's like a better comeback player than playing ahead. I feel like he just likes likes drama or something like that. He just likes uh, all the, the dramatic stuff. You're like, oh, you know what? If um, I, I ain't trying to go up big early. Nah, I'm, I'm all for that. Let's let's keep it close. So then he just he starts clicking later on. But he needs to do that from jump. He needs to do it a lot earlier. So we'll see how it goes, man. Twenty four. Oh, oh. <laughs> like come on, man. How disrespectful y'all gonna be? Twenty four. They got Jamison Winston and I mean Jamis Winston and Taysom Hill. Like they couldn't pick one or the other. They they got both of them together. Like, don't do that, man. You know Jameis Winston going to be the start. They're not going to start no Taysom Hill. You know they're not. I know they're not. We all know they're not. They ain't starting no Taysom Hill. So, J Jameis Winston is going to be the, <laughs> gonna be the starter. Um, I guess they just feeling like, hey, we don't really expect that much from them. Him being this slow. 24. Wow. Mm. Don't even know what to say about that. Uh, number 25, Justin Fields from the Bears. Okay. Justin Fields, I, I I can see why he is this slow again. The projections, man, the rookies. Um, Trevor Lawrence was at 21. I guess they expect him to do better than Justin Fields, but so we'll see how that goes. Um, but Justin Fields with the Bears, like it's with him again. It's it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Um, I, I think yeah, Nick Foles is still there for now. Um, but and for them to even have traded, I don't know what was going on with that. But he's still there for now. And the clock is ticking. Well, as soon as they drafted, even before they drafted uh, him, the, the clock was already ticking. So it's only a matter of time before uh, Fields, in, Fields takes the field. Get a, a little cheesy joke. 26, Jared Goff. Mm. 
I don't even want to say too much on because I feel bad for him, man. Like I said, I, I feel bad for him to have to get traded from there to there, especially with everything that you went through at the previous spot with the Rams and y'all made it to the soup. Mm, that's that had that had to be painful, man. That had to be really painful, man. But that's that's the business, man. Twenty seven. Oh, Cam Cam Newton is this low? Ooh. I guess again, maybe I know it's 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 not just based off of last season, but last season I'm sure it plays a big part. Uh because and Cam Newton did get hurt too. Well, he got the C nineteen. Um, so he missed some time and then how he talked about an I am athlete podcast, it just he just never got to get into a good rhythm. Um, so him being this this low, oh, this low. They like really? That low for Cam? Wow, twenty seven. You feel like he he's not gonna do better than Jared Goff with the Lions? Not they're gonna do better than Justin Fields or Jameis Wentz. I ain't even gotta go back through the whole list. Anyway, twenty eight, Sam Donald with the Panthers. I forget that he got traded there, but yeah, he's a Panther. Um, uh, yeah, okay, I I ain't got no problem with that. <laughs> twenty nine, Tua Tagovailoa. Mm. This guy, he he got a chance to do something this year. He got a chance be, because when you look at what's around him, look at, like, he got Waddle. They drafted Waddle. Okay, cool. But they got Devontae Parker. They got uh, Will Fuller. They got um, Alba Wilson. It's another guy. I cannot think of his name right now. Is it Preston Williams? I don't, yeah, Preston Williams, I think. But so he, he got a nice little supporting cast now, man. They're running back. I'm not sure who they're running back with the situation. Is it still Breeder? It might be, but I'm not 100% sure. But Tua got some weapons now, man. Well, he already has some weapons, but he got more. And then, of course, Mike Jacecki as well. But Tua got some weapons. He might be able to do some stuff. Then still from the uh, from the AFC East, Zach Wilson from the New York Jets. Okay, cool. Ain't got to say too much. Why they got Jalen Hurts this low? Woo, boy. Jalen Hurts at 31. Wow. I feel like he's the 31st best quarterback going into the NF I mean, going into the league this year. Oh, wow. We're going into the season this year in the league. Sorry. I had a complete mess up. Anyway, and then number 32 at the very, very bottom, Drew Locke. Mm. And, and, and let's let's just read this one just to close it out. For Drew Locke, the reason the Broncos acquired veteran quarterback Teddy Bridgewater to compete with Locke for the starting job is because Locke had the 32nd ranked passing grade out of 36 qualifying quarterbacks. He must find a way to clean up his 23 turnover-worthy plays. Oh, yeah, one less than Carson Wentz uh, and make better decisions. Locke showed promise at times. He had the eighth best passing grade when throwing between 15 and 20 yards and executing play action pass. The leash won't be long. If given the opportunity, Locke has to play consistently and smart for Fangio to stick with his young quarterback. I, I don't think he sticks with him at all. I, I think Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater gets that from jump. And the reason being because so I, I, even though he's ranked 32, I think he won't even be on this list because I don't think he's going to be a starter. Um, when your your team trades for a quarterback, uh, especially when when you've been starting, even if they they I think they only gave up like a six round pick, something like that. They didn't give up anything crazy for Teddy B, but still, your team went and got a quarterback, and you were the quarterback for the last couple of years. But they went and got somebody, somebody that's been in the league for a while, somebody that has a lot more experience than you. They went out and got somebody, so. You pretty much know, like, they didn't bring in this guy just, oh, let's upgrade at the backup quarterback position. No. They brought him in to take your job. They brought him in for that. So even though he's at 32, uh, it's not going to be him that ends up being the starter. But anyway, this was a fun list to go over. I, I loved it. I loved it a lot. I had a lot of fun doing this list. And like I said, I, I hate me doing my own list. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. But going over lit, oh, man, yeah, I'm with that all day. So anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Like I said, man, keep your heads up, man. Keep your heads up, and please tell somebody you love them today. Check up on people. Check up on your friends, your family, all of that. We out.